works and plays together perfectly. Note 7, here classic. Recipe for success, proudly brought to you by Samsung. Welcome to Recipe for Success. Now we all know how difficult it is to find a job these days, let alone that dream job. Now this show provides the opportunity to a student chef to do just that, to get their dream job. Every week, a young student will cook a dish for one of South Africa's top chefs. And if they're good enough, they'll walk away with a job offer. They'll have to impress the chef with their preparation, cooking skills, and presentation to get this job. So it's all up to them. I'll also be chatting to some of South Africa's leading entrepreneurs to find out more about their food and wine preference, but to also get their recipe for success. And then there's still the viewers' competition. But let's get straight down to business. This week's student is from Joburg. Hi, I'm Amelia Orampisun. I'm 23 years old. I'm originally from Durban. I'm a fun-loving character. I always have time for people. We had a family tragedy, so I had the time to experience what it was like to present food to the table for them. So I had my own time to practice and learn and to let my passion grow. And that's what inspired me to become a chef. During my time here at Capsicum, we've had a lot of opportunities to work with other experienced people in the field. I've learned so much from them, watching how they work compared to other people. When I found out about the seriousness of the show, I was in awe because I had no idea that the opportunities that were going to be presented for us to work under a top chef at a top establishment is any young chef stream. There was a time that I felt like I was going nowhere, but for something like this to happen now, especially that we're done with school and finishing, that's the best thing that could have happened and I'm looking forward to it and I'm, I'm sure that I'll impress the chef and show people what I'm really made of. Okay, um, Emilio, very good team player, uh, works well in the kitchen, uh, practically very astute, um, likeable guy, I wish him all the best in the future. So Emilio, I see you've got all your prep done. Yes, yeah, chef. Uh, Everything there and some seafood, I'm looking forward to that. How are you feeling? Are you feeling nervous? Uh, quiet, but I feel like I got this. Quietly confident? Yeah, quietly confident, <laughs> yes, but I feel like I got this. Awesome, man. Now listen, uh, Chef uh, Virgil Khan of uh, Indochine is a very highly rated chef. Uh, so he really knows what he's talking about. You know, he, you know you've, you've got to really pull out all the stops to impress him. You know, I'm rooting for you. I know you can do this. Um, it's a dish that you've done before, I suppose. So, uh, you know, all the best of luck. And let's have a look at where you might be working after today's episode, if it's good enough. Led by head chef Virgil Khan, Indochina Dali Graf Estate in Stellenbosch is renowned for its evocative Asian-inspired cuisine, where delicate flavors come alive in the fine dining food theater. The balanced Asian dishes is complemented by an intimate setting upon the crest of the panoramic Halswurte mountain pass and the restaurant interiors which enhance the all sensory dining experience. Virgil has a 14-chef team which is dedicated to ensure that his focus and precision come across in each dish. The kitchen is not only responsible for the diners of Indusheen, but also all the guests staying at the Dali Graf estate. This provides a challenge to ensure that each dish is new, exciting and lives up to the standard of reputation that precedes a spectacular establishment. To round off this breathtaking culinary experience, a stunning art installation created by Lionel Smith and Andre Stead is suspended over diners. Swallows in Flight, featuring over 1,000 swallows, becomes part of the incredible views that stretch across the Stalinbosch Valley to Table Mountain. Dining at Indochin is definitely an unforgettable experience. So Virgil, thanks for joining us, man. I know you're a busy guy, so thanks for making the time. I appreciate it. No, it's a pleasure. It's great being here, you know, obviously being part of this, um, great. pushing people forward. Nice. Emilio, Virgil, Virgil, Emilio. Nice Hi. to meet you, Chef. Nice Hi. to meet you. You too, you too, Chef. <laughs> so, guys, uh, Emilio, look, I mean, you know, I think you can do it. It's all up to Virgil. I'm going to be observing. Uh, you, the decision is up to you at the end of the day. So I'm going to be sitting back. So over to you, Virgil. Cool. So what are you cooking for us today? Chef, I'm preparing uh, my take on a Thai seafood curry 
with uh, panko deep fried bre uh, rice. So, okay, <laughs> so it's actually um, quite challenging, you know, because this is one of my dishes that's been on the menu since we opened the restaurant. Wow. So um, it's probably the most expensive dish on the menu as well. So obviously the flavor and the balance of the dish needs to be there. Yes, sir. So, so how long is this dish going to take you? Roughly 45 minutes, chef. And so, yeah, that'll be done. That's good. So let's start tracking and get busy with it. Okay, thank you, chef. Chef Ajit tells me I can begin and my nerves start racing immediately. I knew what I wanted to do, but the, I think the pressure got to me of having the chef standing there watching me. Like, it's like everything just got jambled up in my head. I'm thinking, okay, I need to start it. What must I start it? Oh no, because I already started burning the, the pan on its own. There was nothing in the pan, but it already started burning. So I'm like, oh no, like when Chef Ruben reminded me about it, I was like, oh, first mistake. What am I gonna do about it now? Then my heart was pounding. <laughs> I just had to take a, a second to, to breathe and think about it nicely and relax myself. And then I started getting into the flow of things like how I, I know I should have been doing in the beginning. I started by eating my oil in a frying pan over medium heat. Then I added my chopped onions and I cooked that for about four to five minutes just so that it becomes translucent. While my onions were frying off, I added some chicken stock into my pots so I can begin cooking my rice. To make my curry paste, I started with my dry ingredients. Then I added my wet ingredients. Ginger, chilies, coriander, and shallots. The coriander I use in my curry paste, I use the coriander stems because the flavor lasts longer while cooking. Okay, so I'm about to cut my lemongrass now. I sliced it, and my mistake, I threw it in the pot without bashing it. Now, by me doing that, I'm hoping that the flavors will still come out because I haven't bruised it or anything to allow the flavors to escape nicely. So I just hope that this works out perfectly. Once I've added all my ingredients for the curry paste, I crushed them in a pestle and mortar. When I was done crushing the paste, I added it to the onions and continued to cook that for a further three minutes. Added my rice to my hot chicken stock. As the chicken stock reduced, I kept topping it up. With my rice, I, instead of using a normal normal water and salt. I tried to use a chicken stock to incorporate a different kind of flavor. While my curry paste is cooking, I put my fish on a high heat, put the presentation side down first so that it can get a nice glaze on top. Now I've got my fish here and I'm basting it and I see the butter's darker than it's supposed to have been. Now my nerves are on end because it's gonna give my fish a burnt flavor and that's the last thing I want right now. But luckily, Chef Ruben reminded me if I just throw a bit of oil in there, Everything will come out perfect. Then I turn it over to continue cooking. With the skin side down on my fish, I put a block of butter in there and continue to paste it to get a nice color and to get that rich flavor from the butter. Now that my fish is done, I'm gonna take it off and set it aside while I prepare my prawns. So I've got my prawns here and I don't know what to do with them. I've got so many different ideas in my head. I'm thinking, should I de-shell the whole thing, or just a bit of it, or leave it whole? And eventually I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna leave it all in stages. So I'll have one that's cleaned, one that's still got the head on with the shell, and one that's got no head but the rest of the shell. So give it a bit of dimension in the plating. I'm gonna put that in a frying pan with some garlic butter and cook that for three minutes or until it turns pink. Once my prawns are done, I took my rice off the heat and strained it. I tried to mold my rice, but it won't stick in like how I wanted it to. So I put it in the fridge so that the starch can become more sticky. While my rice is in the fridge, I added a bit of stock to my curry paste. Then I added my coconut milk and seasoned it with salt and pepper. Here in front of me, I have my crab sticks. I'm gonna cut them at an angle for my presentation purposes. I fry these off in a bit of butter and coriander so that they get a nice golden color on the outside to complement the pink. Okay, so, so far, my dish is going quite fine. Uh, everything looks like it's going okay. Although I'm behind on time, I just need to carry on and get cracking. The world's most lifelike picture, SU HD TV. Recipe for success, proudly brought to you by Samsung. Simply add items during wash. 
add wash. Recipe for success. Proudly brought to you by Samsung. Um, time management. I know I have a having a problem with that because when I first started, I was all over the show. I had no sense of time, no sense of direction, nothing. I just, I lost myself in myself. When my eyes cooled down, I took them out of the fridge and began to mold them into shapes. While molding my shapes, I had a pot of oil heating so I could deep fry them. I coated my rice mold in flour, eggs, and breadcrumb. This is to give it a crispy effect when I deep fry them. I deep fried my panko rice balls, and when that was done, I seasoned them with salt and pepper while the oil was still hot. With my stock reduced, I then added my mussels, but you need to watch them because they cook really quickly. When that was done, I added fresh lime juice to bring out the freshness of all the flavors. Chefs, I'm done. Good, Emilio. Everything done? Yes, yeah, Chef. Okay. Virgil, what do you think? How did he do in, on time? And, you know, just while watching him, did you pick up anything? Yeah, just to touch on the time, I think um, time was a little bit, uh, a bit over, but obviously due to uh, the nerves, you know, stress coming in. <laughs> uh, but in general, I think it's lots of um, different uh, um, tactics, techniques that he was using, crumbing, pan frying of the fish, you know, so obviously he showed a lot of um, skill involved here as well. So, yeah, I think it's good. Okay, Emilio, while you start preparation for plating, last week I had a chat with Nicolo Padel, a young entrepreneur, to find out more about his recipe for success. So, Nick, thanks for joining us. Um, I know you're a busy guy. Thank you, Ruben. I'm not as busy as you are, so <laughs> it's an honor to be here and to share some ideas uh, and some experiences. I'm actually brought you a small token of appreciation, just uh, um, wow. thank, something I'm sure you will appreciate um, to thank you for, for oh, having me. Lovely. I love gifts. Yeah, so you I can guess. It. Can I open it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you must open it. There's oh, a, wow. It's a little note. Um, oh, thank you very much. I hope you enjoy wine. I do. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Tell us how your company came about and um, you know, just how it started. Our company started a year and a half ago. So we, start, we launched 28th of January 2015. So what we're going to do, or what we're busy doing, is to partner up with importers and retailers all over the world that stock South African wine. And basically what's, what's going to happen is we have Bartini in South Africa distributed by Bartini, so in, on our network. In Germany, we have Bartini um, distributed by the German importer. And if you go on port to port and want the Bartini bottle, no matter if you are in Europe or if you are in South Africa, you will receive it next day delivered automatically by the closest warehouse to you. So that's the experience we'd like to create. Now, Nick, being an Italian, I mean, have you developed a, a love for uh, Boboti, South, South African I love food? Yet? My girlfriend does a fantastic Boboti, <laughs> yes. I actually, I really adore babuti and I love malva pudding and um, no, but I enjoy again, I mean, the, living in Cape Town is a privilege. Um, we've just traveled in the States. We were in, uh, and we were high, had high, very high expectations. We were in San Francisco with Napa. But then we came back and we said, my God, this is the, this is the center of the world. I mean, the amount of restaurants and uh, beautiful wineries and landscapes and everything is here. Really amazing. And we've got amazing produce. And, um, amazing and, produce. Do you cook at home at all? Do you yes, enjoy every that? Day, every day. Um, we cook, uh, yeah, both Tammy and I cook at home. We host a lot. We, we have our, we designed our house, which we recently moved in, around the kitchen. So we've built our um, dining table in the kitchen, uh, which is also our working kitchen. So it's, it's often we have half of the table, we have, we have t plates on it and people are sitting, and the other half we're preparing. And that's, I mean... It's, it sounds very Italian, but I'm, that's, that's how I guess yeah. a lot Make of people do that. Pasta, I think <laughs> <laughs> exactly like an advert, yeah. <laughs> that's me. Now, uh, Nick, I mean, you, you, you're still a young guy and you've been fairly successful in your business. Uh, I'm sure that I mean, there's still many ideas and uh, whether it's growing your, your companies as they are or seeing other opportunities out there. Um, to the entrepreneurs out there that can learn something that you've done so far and going forward, what would be your recipe for success that's worked for you? 
Sharing is everything. Sharing feeds creativity, collaboration feeds creativity. And who doesn't want to share, then they, they can just go somewhere else. It's fine. By sharing, you can perfect what you're planning to do. And it's a, it's a great opportunity. You have access to people who have more experience than you, your father, your mother, everyone. Um, and then uh, get your, definitely be serious about the funding because any idea needs obviously to be backed up and your funding shouldn't be just, okay, I need to buy a computer and that's how I start and then everything else will just happen. Uh, it needs to be part of your planning. So that needs to be secure. You need to build a business which is light, which doesn't necessarily rely on big costs initially. And then lastly, believe in it. I mean, again, it's, it's just, it sounds uh, very cliche, but uh, there will be times that, that you stop believing in it. And uh, I, I, there's one golden rule, hard work pays off. Again, another cliche, so true. Put as much, but really be honest with yourself, put as much work as you can in it and it will happen. It will happen one way or another if you open minded and if you, um, if you have passion in what you do. Um, I'm not a person of necessarily a person of numbers, but I'm a passionate person, and I think it pays off. And, uh, it, it, and since you want kind this year, it did. So it will go on doing it. Nick, listen, thanks for my lovely it's gift. Pleasure. I can't wait to enjoy that. And thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Well, thanks for yours. Thank cheers, you cheers. very much. Cheers. Now, that's great advice for any young and upcoming entrepreneur. Now, Emilio, you can start plating, and we'll see you at final presentation. Good luck. Thank you, Chef. Thank you, Chef. So I'm about to start plating, and my original plan is not looking like it's going to work. So with that being said, I think I'm going to try something different with plating. Instead of having everything linear, I'm going to try to work with the curve of the plates. My curry, which is my sauce, I put that down first, and then I see, OK, I don't want to put any more of this on the plates. On top of that, I pulled, I add my prawn, and my deep fried rice bowl. And then I can see from this angle that I can add more on the other side of the plate. So I turn my plates around and then I pull with the crab sticks to give it a bit of height. And as you can see at the end, it came out quite amazingly, I think. It was not something that I planned on, but I'm happy with this end result and I hope the judges like it. You won't believe what you can make in a microwave. Hot Blast, recipe for success, proudly brought to you by Samsung. Finally, a fridge you can personalize, Top Mount Freezer, recipe for success, proudly brought to you by Samsung. So I'm down with my plates and I'm sitting in front of the chefs, my food is covered, they have no idea what I'm about to present to them. And I'm thinking to myself, was it right by me changing my plates and not going with my original plan? Oh no, oh no, what are they going to say, what are they going to say? Chefs, I uh, did my best, I tried my best, um, gave it my all, and that's what I have to present to you. <coughs> this is my take on a Thai seafood curry with panko um, fried rice. Mm, nice. Yeah, I like it. It's It's always difficult to, um, I always say it, but you know, like a curry, difficult to plate it. I think it's um, quite modern, you know, obviously. Mm. It's attention to detail, obviously cooking each one individually. So I think it's quite, quite good. Very clean plating, yeah. so you can see everything that's on the plate. Yeah. Nice, Emilio. Now it's all in the in the taste, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> okay, Virgil, you can go from that side, and then I'll try. And I'll take from this side. Yeah. <laughs> so the chefs are tasting my food now, and I'm thinking, oh no, they're gonna taste this burnt butter. They're gonna taste that this rice wasn't sticking together or something. And there was no look on their face, they didn't smile, they didn't frown, so that would have had me worse, thinking, oh no, oh no, what are they going to say, what are they going to say? I think the seafood was cooked really nicely, huh? Yeah, I think it's quite nice, you know, obviously with, um, with the sauce being separate, you know, um, you can taste the fish, you know, you can taste the prawns, you know. I think it's quite nice, the approach that they took with the dish. Um, so tell us about the, the wines that you've chosen to serve with this dish. Um, I've chosen a, a Riesling and a Chenin Blanc because uh, white wine and seafood go hand in hand. They complement each other either way. And 
The flavors of the Rwanda that I chose will also break down the acidity and the, the heat of the curry and give it a bit more refreshing, a more refreshing taste. Okay, Emilio, I think, um, I think you've done a good job here. Yeah? But yeah, Virgil, it's all up to you, isn't it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Where would you want to see yourself in the next five years? The next five years, hopefully, I'll be coming back from traveling. I would, I would actually like to travel and learn more flavors like I did with this dish, use a Thai flavor with seafood, which I can find locally. So the same thing with maybe different cuts of meat, learn something from somewhere else and bring it back home so that yeah, at home everybody can have a taste of what it's like abroad. So yeah, I think I've got more or less in my, my thing so that I need, need to do. You need some time to think about this yeah, one? Yeah, just to think about this, yeah. Now Emilio, I know you're anxious, but you're gonna have to wait a little bit longer. It's now competition time. There are almost 250,000 rand in prizes to be won in our Recipe for Success viewer competition, which includes a full lifestyle solution worth over 100,000 rand from Samsung, comprising of a Galaxy S7 Edge smartphone, a Galaxy Tab S2 tablet, a color laser multifunction printer, a 55-inch curved SUHD TV, a water wall dishwasher, a top mount freezer and a hot blast convection microwave oven. From Capsicum, a City and Guilds diploma bursary in food preparation. From fine and fabulous Neo Group SA, Jean de Bois Le Coil 24 piece French cutlery set. From Grand Cru Glassware, eight Riedel varietal specific glasses. And from Mervyn Gurr Ceramics, a handmade crockery set for four. Only one lucky viewer will win all of these prizes. You can enter via SMS or on our website. To qualify for the grand prize, you need to correctly answer one of our viewers' competition questions. The more you enter, the better your chances. The competition closes on Sunday the 4th of December at midnight and the winner will be announced right after the last episode on the 6th of December 2016. For more information and terms and conditions, please visit www.recipeforsuccess.tv this week's question is, what was Nicola Pudel's recipe for success? Was it A, never wear stripy ties? B, collaborate with other people? C, always tie your left shoe first? Please SMS Samsung followed by your answer A, B or C to 41703 or enter on our website www.recipeforsuccess.tv so Virgil, um, you've listened to Emilio, you've tasted his food. Um, what do you think? Um, you know, uh, can you offer him a job? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, just uh, looking at his whole performance, you know, when it comes to his mise en place, his prep that he was doing, different techniques that he was um, showing us, you know, deep frying, uh, making a curry sauce from scratch, you know. So he's got all the basic mm. stuff that he do need. You do need a little bit of fine-tuning still. Um, obviously, a little bit of more discipline when it comes to organization and stuff like that. But, yeah, I think it should be a, a good one for the industry, you know, just a good protege. Obviously, take him into the roots again from, from scratch. That's a yes if you didn't get it. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you, Chef. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Emilio, I think you're gonna, you know, if, especially if this is the type of food that you want to learn more about, you're gonna learn a lot from uh, Chef Virgil. So good luck with that. Well done. I hope you're very happy. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Virgil, thanks for your time. I really appreciate it, man. Yeah, I know you're busy, guys. Me. So thanks, thanks for that. My nice pleasure. Thanks for watching. See you next week. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Chef Ruben, Chef Virgil, and Samsung for giving me this awesome opportunity to take my career to the next step. This is a big stepping stone for me, and I feel like it's just the first door that's of many that's gonna be opened. Everything you need to succeed. Samsung, business in a box. Recipe for success, proudly brought to you by Samsung.